Hello, everyone. This is Karen Vaughn from 106.7 WTLC. You can listen to my show Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. And right now we are just wrapping up the day of day one of our virtual expo, Inspire You. And after viewing all the panels from today, I feel motivated and full of knowledge that I know I'm going to apply ASAP. But right now it's time to let our hair down and have some fun with an icon of R&B. I am calling on all my candy girls because this is actually a really exciting moment. Um, I know for candy girls all around the nation and myself because we are all super fans. So I'm going to try my best not to fan out. But welcome to Inspire You, the leading guy of new edition, the heartthrob, the one that makes it happen, the one and only Ralph Tresvant. Welcome to the show. Welcome to hanging out with us during Inspire You. Hi, <laughs> Karen. Thank you for having me. This, this is going to be fun. I was looking forward to this one. You know, good, I love good. Yeah, and I think so you much. have your nice, you know, me time, self-care, backdrop by the tree is beautiful. Yeah, you know, this is, yeah, the sun is out today. I figured why not take advantage of it. Come out here and get some of that vitamin D on my skin. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to get out here and get that natural, the natural minerals in my body today. Yeah, so I'm feeling good. Which is important. And we'll talk about that, you know, throughout the interview since, you know, we're focused on inspiring people and motivating people. And um, I'm excited that you're here. So thank you for taking the time today. Well, my pleasure. It really is. So, you know, I'm going to start with uh, the new edition story. Um, uh -huh. Watching that in 2017, I felt like that young high school candy girl all over again, reliving all those moments along with you guys. And the energy was at an all time high. I felt like it was uh, all for love tour all over again, which I saw three times. But anyway, I, I, I digress. Um, the moment that really stood out for me, though, was when you got the phone call about at a young age going solo. And you were like, no, if it's not me and the guys, it's not me. And that just really spoke to your integrity and just really stood out to me because I'm like, wow, had Ralph made a different decision, we would yeah. not have had all the music you guys curated throughout the years and the memories to where, you know, you have 40, 50, and 60 year old women calling themselves candy girls. And now young girls that have seen your story calling themselves candy girls from all your good music. So that was just a, a really, strong moment for me yeah it, it was powerful it was a powerful moment a lot of people comment about that scene you know mm -hmm. uh it took us into the second night the first night kind of left that cliffhanger there it was like all right this story's about to be all right you know because we was telling facts we was telling the truth and people could feel it from the first night that the story was going to be real was going to be honest and true to exactly what went down opposed to trying to just do something for the success of it you know to make it successful we really just wanted to lay the story out there, the journey out there, and let the chips fall where they may. And that was one of the chips that even the fellas didn't know about at the time. The group never knew all these years that that took place. That you know, I was stepped to on my own by Mari Star and the record label, and they was trying to. They just it was something. Then it was something about just having too many parents to deal with, too many kids. They wasn't really into it. They wanted to just sign the voice that seemed to be dominating most of the records. And, you know, I just wasn't having it. The guys actually are part of the reason why it was fun for me. And that's what it all was back then. It was fun. I enjoyed doing the synchronized choreography with everybody and getting together and building. We used to meditate, do all kind of little stuff together via our management, make us listen to the old Jackson record with the lights out, the lot Jackson live, and we would sit there together. So it was just so many moments and memories building up to the point where we got a record a record deal where they offered us a record deal that you know i just wasn't ready I, I wasn't i wasn't feeling that it was it wouldn't have happened the whole um point of me being in it and getting into the industry was with the fellas i was with so it showed up and i'm glad that it, w it came off the way it did and people could feel another side of me that um just even as a little guy i already was built that way my family raised me that way you know mm -hmm. And then you think about you having the opportunity and the first opportunity in the group to go solo mm. to where New Attention becomes this super group 
and these extensions of solo careers and groups to you are the last person in the group to launch your solo career. Do you wish you would have done it earlier? I think I wish I would have just done other things in general. Yeah. Not so much the music industry or solo. I wish I'd have went with my right mind. Well, my first mind was to expand and show other people different sides of me because I was getting locked into the candy girl imagery. Um, just the, the the child thing that I didn't want to get. I didn't want that to follow me throughout my life where I couldn't do anything else or really represent where I came from and some of the other musics I grew up on because it's deep. It's real. The music goes and the, the influences just go so much deeper that shaped and molded me and all the other guys into what we became eventually or what we were then. So it was a matter of um, trying to, exp I wish I would have expanded more of that back then because people would have a bigger picture, a bigger perspective of just the totality of what makes uh, up me, uh, you know, what made me up as a person with my family bringing the, the stuff I grew up around. It was hard. It was rugged. It wasn't real sweet and pretty and, and candy boyed out. You know, it was a, a different type of lifestyle that I wish I could have um, further reflected and just helped other people who were in that situation understand I've been there and I'm out here doing this thing. Just it was it, it helps with the influence and and, and the, um, inspiring others to do what you did. That's might be that might be in those situations. You know, so. I, in that aspect, I wish I had done a little bit more away from the group. And again, you know, I'm into all kinds of things from science, holistic medicine, mm -hmm. I'm into um, writing and, and and producing. And these things I just never really attacked. I, I eventually became a, a dad and a husband. And I just fell more into that side of life than I did just being the, the entertainment thing, you know. But I do. When I look up in retrospect, I think about all the things that I could have done to secure the future a little better and just leave a, leave more of a legacy behind for my kids and things that they could take over when I'm gone. I wish I would put it. I wish I would have, um, you know, I took advantage of some of those things a little more. Mm -hmm. You still have time, Ralph. You have all the time in the world. So, and I know you're you're, you're definitely taking advantage of it now. I'm on it. I'm on it. I got back on it. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you know, and, and speaking of what you're doing now, you have a documentary, uh, a closer look on uh, UMC.TV. Uh, and it's the first time you're really revealing your story, Ralph's story, um, and your truth. Why is now, now is the time? Well, I'm re-coming out. And I think just like we was talking about a second ago. Yeah. Um, revisiting all the things I didn't do. You know, just being so private and so tucked away, nobody really knows me. They just know the entertainer, they just know the videos and the entertainment that I've placed into the, you know, and in, in, um, that I've been a part of, but not really not myself. And again, it's all a part of just opening up and revealing the totality that makes me who I am, opposed to just the, the glitz and the glamour and the success of the group and the... Hollywood Walk of Fame and just the record means ratings of records sold and tours. I mean, that, that lifestyle is beautiful, but I feel like I needed people to understand a little bit more. And I just thought that it was, it's more inspirational to see the behind the scene things you have to endure to help people who might be jumping into this and going through some of them same things, stick with it. You know, person, you know, look, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If you, if you, um, if you stick with it, you see, you see yourself through the tough times and you, that's how you get to the good times. It's there. all the stuff that I've always shown was the good times. So I felt like now is the time while I'm resurfacing, while I'm doing a new record, new projects out there with me and Johnny, I'm working on a new album. Got some TV show things I'm working, you know, clothing. I got things that I'm working on that as I came uh, back on, you know, basically resurfacing, I figured I wanted to resurface with all those truths with me. Understood, understood. Mm -hmm. Speaking your truth, it's, it's therapeutic. It is, it really <laughs> is for me. You know, being able to let that side of my life be revealed. It's therapeutic. It really is. It's something that I always felt like it was nobody's business. You know, it's like family who go through things behind the scenes. You just, that's family business. And it's um, one of the biggest ways I've found to separate myself from the entertainer and the and the, the guy my mother and father birthed in Boston years ago. Mm -hmm. And so um, that walk was more important than the entertainment side. Entertainment was a way to support all the things I'm going away from entertainment and all the people I love and helped raise me and all those things, you know, being there for them and being able to contribute to their lives. That was 
that's what it was all about for me. And so, um, yeah, so that's, as time moved on, it was just time to really start getting more into uh, who I am so people could see that you know, bigger picture of who I am. Awesome. And, you know, when, when we think of New Edition and, and listening to your music and, you know, seeing the movies and kind of knowing that you guys have had your heads and your clothes, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the magic, from those experiences, you know, with you guys, what have you learned about forgiveness? In terms of forgiveness, I mean, you you know, you just learn how, especially when you're in a group setting, you have to learn to give and take. You know, you might think this is the absolute best course of action to take right now. Mm -hmm. The best fit to wear, the best record to do, the best promoter to go with, or the best um, management. And, you know, in your mind, that's how you see it. But then you have five other minds that you have to run it through, that they have to, they have to be on the same page with you. So after 40 something, almost 40 years of doing that give and take or being in a situation where you have different minds at the table before you can make a real decision or something concrete to go on. That's how you learn how to forgive. You learn how to, it's through the, through understanding other perspectives, you know, you learn how to put everything on the table and let it balance itself out. The best ideas always don't make it to the top of the surface, but the most common one usually does. And sometimes that is the best idea. It's the best way to approach it. So just that, so the engine, uh, until the car can go. And other than that, the car was be sitting still trying to figure out what gas to put in it, what tires to put on it, you know, what oil, did you check the lights or whatever, you know, you'd be sitting there at the, um, in the parking lot forever. So just to keep the car going, I've learned how to, um, give and take. And through that, you learn how to forgive because there's bump heads that bump during that time. You know, you clash heads during those, those moments a lot. And you realize um, at the end of the day, how to forgive, how to forgive, how to forget, how to move on, how to make the bigger picture or the greater good come to the surface at, at any moment. So yeah, the group has taught a lot. I think just by being a group and having to make the type of decisions as a group that, that we've had to make, make as a group, that helps do that. That helps um, build the character of being able to forgive. Yeah. And speaking of giving and taking, which one of your songs, right, that either you recorded with New Edition or as a solo artist that you didn't want to record that became a hit? There's not many that I didn't want to record. Okay. Um, <laughs> when I got in the studio, we were usually in there with masters, people that I knew were just great at what they do. Mm -hmm. The first album was a no-brainer because it was the first time I've ever recorded anything. So anything you threw at me, I was just in there happy to sing it. I got a part? All right, cool. So we was in there just knocking it out. Mm -hmm. As time goes on, you want to try to fine-tune stuff that that fits you and, and, and not too far away from that. So, but there hasn't been too many songs. There's been songs that the ones that actually I didn't want to sing, Usually didn't make the records. They didn't have. They didn't end up on the album. So okay. They locked stuff in the vault, full of stuff that I didn't want to sing. That I thought was, okay, that's kind of corny or that's kind of nerdy or that's that you know that kind of thing. We had a song we did um, a while back. I can't remember who even produced it, but it was something about sneaking around. I'm tired of sneaking around. It sounded like a country record, like a country western record. And back then, I was like. This is not going to work, man. I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to lose all my hood points, man. Everybody, <laughs> everybody in OP about to shut me down there. So, but most of the stuff that made it, mm -hmm. solo ones and um, as in the, as as a group member, um, the ones that I didn't feel you know strong about, they they're in the lab, they're in a vault somewhere, hidden away from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you want to break those out every now and then. Just let us hear one. <laughs> After God calls me back, y'all go visit that vault. Y'all can hear all that. <laughs> right now, I'm still controlling that boat. That that vault stands sealed. Okay. <laughs> you know, hold on to that. I get it. I get my it. Kids, yeah, listen, my kids may release them one day. You know, they go through the vault and say, this is some unreleased stuff for my dad, for whoever wants to hear it. They scared. Maybe that'll help them stay afloat when they need it. You know, they might need to come up and they'll be sitting around for them to dip and dab to see what works. See, you've already got a plan, already got a plan. Absolutely. So was there a moment 
in the new edition story that was hard for you to watch? Was there a part where you like had to cover your eyes, reliving that moment again? Um, a lot of it. There was a lot of moments in there that felt like that. Mm-hmm. Can imagine. I think um, the one you brought up was very touching. It's not what I was letting, it was one of those things that I just remember being there. I remember being in that situation and looking back afterwards, years later, the guy still never had that conversation with the, with the fellow, mm-hmm. but feeling like, um, what, you know, it was my first taste of how the industry really works. And then watching the industry live up to that years later, because they continued that, that same pursuit as we moved on, trying to break the fellas up, break the group up and eventually we learned how to do it ourselves. And make our own Voltron, where you have the Bobby doing his prerogative thing, the Bell Biff, the Foe, the Johnny Gill, Ralph Trez Van, and kind of had the all the missing pieces that make up, you know, the super robot at the end of the day called New Edition, the Voltron of the. Mm-hmm. So for me, it felt like um, that moment was one of the moments that was very touching. But there was a lot of them. I remember sitting down when he was dealing with me and the first time they heard my music when I was working on music alone and everybody's starting to get this feeling like I was going to leave the group. That's what started the seed of Belle Biv DeVoe and needing, feeling like they needed to find a Johnny Gill or needed to find another lane outside of New Edition for themselves um, so that they could eat and events and for the, what in their mind at the time, if I ever left, if I decided I was going to leave or become this solo artist, um, what were they going to do? And it was hard watching moments like that be lived out because it's so far behind us now. Yeah. But it does bring it right back to the surface when you're watching it. And you you know, other people are watching it now and getting that truth. You know, you just, it just feels awkward. It's one of those things that just feels like the awkward, the elephant thing in the room, the pink elephant in the room, nobody ever addressed being addressed. It kind of brought that back up. Mm-hmm. But overall, I just thought that. That's that's the way it should have been told with the the, the true journey, the real facts. Um, if there's anything about the movie that I, I didn't really feel was that we couldn't get everybody to play their role. There was too many roles, too many managements or too many different people. So some roles were or some people's um, what they added to the group story was wrapped up in one or two different uh, characters. You know, so like there was several things or a few things that would took place that Brooke Payne, um, it was wrapped up in his story or Michael Rappaport, who's had a few people that was wrapped up in his part of the story. Um, just certain things that the but from budget time restriction can, um, you know, those type of things just didn't allow us to we would have needed to, to continue it as a series, which is what I was hoping would happen. We get a chance to do another three or four episodes or, you know, make it a real eight, eight to ten, ten story. Uh, I mean, ten episode series type of thing. I think we could have told it even even more in depth and a little bit better. Mm-hmm. But overall, I thought it was a great story. We got everything out that needed to be talked about. A lot of things people didn't know about the group and, you know, just more of the group's true character, I think, came to the surface after um, the movie. So. Yeah, I was proud of the movie overall. Not a lot of cringing, not a lot of moments where I felt like uh, that wasn't true. But no, I didn't really get that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it um, showed just all what you guys had gone through and just reminding everybody that you were like young kids. You know, you grew up in front of everybody. So yeah, it it was a good story. um, And um, it's something that people still watch to this day and they have DVR or, or, or they watch it uh, on demand. And, you know, I'm sure many have watched it during the pandemic as we are all home and have stay at home orders and, or have had and just keeping life simple, like sitting by the tree. Um, yeah. And there's some people that have during this pandemic have hit their breaking point, that have hit their rock bottom. And it's the very first time ever happened in their adult life and they're scared. Yes. And you were going through your trials and your tribulations. And since you were um, in this group, you know, personal issues, professional issues, what would you say to the person experiencing going through so much for the very first time in their adult life? 
Wow. You know, that's a tough one because everybody's situation is so different. Unless actually hearing a specific situation and what job law losing yeah. their job for the first time. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. So I say that I'd I'd first say what I say to all of my people and my family and personal family is when it gets down to nothing, God is up to something. So you gotta hold on through the struggle. You know, it's again going back to what I was saying with being in a group and or in my life where I've, I haven't shown the struggles enough. I haven't shown some of the stuff I had to endure to, to have the career that they've seen me have. And that's where it boils down to. We come from nothing. You know what I'm saying? I always look at it like that. I started with nothing. I heard this quote in a movie once. I started with nothing and I still got plenty of it left. As long as you keep that mentality, there's no real rock bottom. There's no sinking below anything, you know, where it takes you all the way out. There's a come up. Get with your family members, stick together, stop pooling up resources and knowledge, start getting together and stop being so separated, I think, is one of the first things that I would try to do if I was in that situation. And believe me, we're all just a, 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 a just a, a tour away or a record away or seems like or something away from being in the same the same boat. You know, I have family members who wasn't nearly as, as fortunate as I am that I'm watching them deal, go through it and deal with it personally. And at the end of time, this is a time to come together, recognize what's going on with you, what's happening with other people, get together with people you've been distant from, especially that bloodline. Get with your bloodline, closest friends, start, start eating together, start pooling up together, start doing things where... It's not all on you to maintain and keep it popping, you know, keep it going. Get with other folks and and try to hold on. Let's see where it's going. Every it's so it's still at the beginning stages of it all to the to it. So it's like everybody's trying to feel it out. But I do know it's too much separation. If you do have a lot of separation going on in your own personal world, it's time to float, it's time to it's time to bridge those gaps. It's time to fill in those gaps and get back with the ones who, you know. You grew up around, you was raised with, and like I said, start re putting the resources together, start getting that information together, and come up with collective plans so that you can continue to eat, continue to have a place to sleep, continue to, um, just, you know, just weather the storm. But don't try to do it alone. That's where it, um, that's where it can take you under. You can get in your own head, stop taking you out of the, you know, that strength element, and get back in numbers. That's what I would say. Yeah. So what have you done for yourself to, to maintain your, your self-care, your, your mental health during the pandemic? I follow some of the greatest, you know. I became a vegan almost four and a half, five years ago. Okay. So I've been eating really well. Follow Dr. Sebi. Follow Dr. Africa. Patrick Delbert. I've watched all these guys who are naturalists and herbalists been a big part of my life for a long time uh even further back than i became an actual vegan it was slow steps for me but once i jumped in i jumped all the way in mm -hmm. so uh holistic living in in general so push-ups here sit up there you know walks in the park keeping that vitamin e and d on your skin from the natural sun you know um and just um learning always trying to educate myself on even furthering what I know. I never feel like I know it all, you know? So I always make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm a YouTube fanatic under specific pages, you know what I mean? Yeah. I watch everything from the con conspiracy theories to like facts, things that are already factual. Um, that's why I lean toward more. People who are just sharing facts about what took place, what's happening in the world. I love Dane Calloway, shout out to Dane. And there's just a lot of cats out there that have been sharing um, wisdom, and that helps keep your mental side of everything going, you know, as well mm -hmm. as eating. Make sure you get them electric foods in your body and things that act real foods, you know, that actually work when you get when they when you ingest them. I think it's those things that help keep the mind clear, help you start down a rabbit hole that will eventually lead you to a. Um, a lot of clarity, a lot of awakeness, a lot of, you know, being able to make your own um, decisions about things instead of always taking everybody's word for things. You, you know, educate yourself. So it's a cross between education, mm -hmm. 
literally walking the walk. I don't do a lot of talking because I'm a very quiet person. I'm at home living it, living it out, sharing it with my kids. And, you know, I mess up here and there and eat some seafood or I'll mess and eat something. I'll slip back, but I go, I know how to clean the body now. I know how to fast, detox. I know how to remove it instead of letting 30, 40 years of bad eating and bad toxins build up in my body now. I know how to get rid of something immediately. So if I do something to myself uh, that I wasn't supposed to do, I can, um, I know what to do to to reverse that or to not let it become uh, something that's going to become a chronic problem for me. So those are some of the main things I do. I take walks. I love nature. You know, uh, you see me out here now. Laying yeah. down, sitting down on the sitting out here on the grass. Got my feet in the grass. You know, I'm by the water so I can smell that ocean. Can walk by them areas. You know, I just did things where I felt like. Um, mm-hmm. These were all the benefits are the sea mosses, the algaes, you know, the real foods of the world. I just I've been embodying that type of lifestyle for a long time now. I'm passing it on. I took on the um, I took on the uh, the Ubuntu as a movement. Ubuntu, I am because we are. I have because we have. Mm-hmm. And once I fell upon that, I saw that one day, and it just changed my life. It's a, it, but that's how I want to think for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I am because we are. And it just summed up how I kind of already been walking without understanding or having a way to summarize it. Mm-hmm. That did it for me. So all of those things just help you stay uh, level-headed. It helps you keep focused on the right things. And it helps you stay steer, stay the course. You know, you don't keep popping off or jumping off and slipping and going back too much. You know, you, you really immediately see where you you got to jump back on. Even if you do something, you have a drink or start doing something with the wrong foods, go back to a, a steak sandwich or something. You, know, you got to know how to get that out your body immediately. Yeah. And, yeah. To keep it from becoming something that hurts you a long time. Everybody detox after a certain amount of time and should definitely fast for a certain amount of time. You have to do an extreme one, but let the body get back to a point where it can fix itself. It can heal itself. It can do what it's supposed to do. The minerals are important. You need a book, wow. Yeah, yeah, we've been focusing on vitamins forever, mm-hmm. and it's the the important one is the minerals. The minerals can work without vitamins. Vitamins can't work without minerals. So if you don't have the proper amount of minerals in that system, it's a lot of things that the body's trying to heal and fix from skin problems to gastrointestinal problems, inflammation, all this. You got to get the herbs. You got to get to the things that the body's really asking for. That's why we have a mouth. What is it really trying to what is it really? What is what do you have a mouth for? You know what I mean? What is what is that process that God gave us? What is going on there? Once you figure that out, you know what you're supposed to be ingesting. You know what's supposed to be going through there. That's really allowing the body to do what it does. Mm-hmm. Like that, um, like I said, I mean, I could go on and on and on with this yeah, I topic. Think we need to write a book, Ralph, because <laughs> it's something that you're you're really passionate about. I started taking sea moss at the beginning. Of, of the pandemic and black seed oil and I'm feeling a whole lot better. I slacked for a minute. I got sick and I was like, okay, hold on, get it together. You knew. That's how you knew what it was. It's like, yo, I was exactly. Sometimes you got to do that so it can hit you in the head like without, like as a fact. Yeah, it hit you as a fact at that point. Like, you know what? What I was doing was actually working. It wasn't pseudo science. It wasn't something that was just in my mind. It mm-hmm. was literally working for me. And so sometimes you got to do that mm-hmm. to see that you had it right and to get right back on it. So you're back on it now, though, right? Oh, absolutely. As soon as it's <laughs> over, it's my time to take uh, my black seat for it. So I am, I am ready. I am back on it. Like, we're back on with the music and all mine. The black seed oil. Oh, Jesus called that the cure for everything but death. Well, you death. know what? That's what I'm on right now. That's what I'm on. <laughs> well, go for it. That's good stuff, man. It can tell your energy. It lifts your energy up. Inflama- mm-hmm. It does so many things, man. Anybody look up black seed oil, mm-hmm. you'll see what's going on. Cold pressed. You want to get the right one, want to make sure it's pure. Yeah. That in your system. And yeah, that's a million. My cousin called me the other day. He was on the phone. My cousin Aaron. Uh-huh. Aaron Hall, he comes, and I, I finally jumped on that sea moss, man. And my energy level and my this and I'm like, man, I issues that I was having with my stomach is gone. Yeah, all kind of stuff, yep. man. The game turned around for him. So yeah, those that's that's one of the top on my list that that he 
that Egyptian, I mean, you know, I ain't gonna name a particular brand, but that black seed oil, that seed moss, and even burdock root. You throw that yeah. into the food, and that would be the top on my list. If you're not, if you're gonna, if you're gonna start somewhere, start with those because you'll feel, you'll feel the immediate benefits of that, like pretty soon, you know, mm -hmm. almost the same day, within a day or two for sure. You'll definitely see and start feeling different with those in your body. Mm -hmm. Nah, thank you for the formula. We we appreciate that getting our getting our mind, our hearts, and our souls and our bodies on point. Just like you and Yanni have had this formula with music. Let's talk about the music. The singles like this one for me and you and perfect. And now mm -hmm. your single, all mine. When is the project coming, bro? We're still working on it, trying to finish it, finish it up. So you get the right records. It's like I have so many records, and I have some that I've been working on that I'm going to incorporate into the album. Um, but as I move on, as time moves on and things keep happening, because I was dealing with stuff uh, just about being closer, empowerment of, mm -hmm. um, you know, just just things in general, almost Marvin Gaye-ish, makes me want to hollerish. I was working on a lot of music that was in that realm, and I I'm going to keep that on there. But as I moved on, it feels like I need to spread more love. I need that energy uh, that I've been spreading all my life, which has been more about... Um, just 99% of my records is about love, falling in love, popcorn love, can't, you know, if it isn't love. It's so lost in love. The thing has been for me, uh, what, helplessly in love? Just a whole lot of love being spread. And I want to get back to that because I just feel like that's not being addressed enough these days. Yeah. You know, when I hear music and I hear things that people are doing or into, I was like, where's the love, man? You know, and that's what's lacking in the community, the frequency that's vibrating in our areas right now is so mean mugged and so club and twerk and twerk um oriented and you know these things it's just not enough love to balance it out you know so to me i'm gonna do my part so right. as soon as I do those records that feel good and they're in that area and they had that love and i have them they coming now um awesome. so I i'm going into the new year maybe second quarter or so uh, well i'm gonna drop it I'm gonna drop the rest of the project on them Trying to find right. that single to follow up on um, all mine, so I can keep that energy going while I finish it up. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't. I don't feel like I have that one yet. Okay. The follow up it kind of gives people even more of a uh, 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 just a vision of what the album is going to sound and feel like. I want that next one to really kind of turn the corner. Like, uh oh, this is what we. This is what's coming on this album. So that's what I want to. Um, I'm doing now, looking for those special records so that I can line it up with, I don't know, 11 or so. I Probably 11 records that just mm -hmm. feel special instead of, I don't want no album fillers, no cut, you know, the things that kind of just on the album. I don't want any of that. I want everything to feel like I meant this. I meant this song right here. And I want, you know, so once I do that mm -hmm. and I feel like I got that, then I'm going to drop it. Awesome. Well, you know what? We're waiting. We'll be here and ready to listen. I Thank would love you. to take a listen to it. I think we need a song on the pandemic of a couple falling out of love and falling in love together sure. and being around each other for nine months for the first time. There's things you're discovering about that person. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Ralph, mm -hmm. I, have, I have a surprise. We have some indie candy girls that would like to ask you a question. We have candy girl Ramika and candy girl Sarah, and we're gonna bring them in. And we're gonna um, have we're gonna start with Monica and then Sarah. Um, <laughs> are uh, uh, fans of um, uh, and of course uh, the addition and uh, would be remiss not to include a few candy girls in this uh, experience. So, Ramika, what is your question? Hi, Ralph. <laughs> Uh, so my question is, right now we're in this versus world. So it's all these versus battles. Now, and I personally am a New Edition fan from day one, so I don't think anyone could actually go against New Edition. But what's a versus battle that you would like to see? With New Edition, my goodness. You know what I would do? I would ver I would put New Edition against Bell Biv DeVoe, Johnny Gill, Ralph Tresvan, and Bobby Brown. We do our own verses. We keep it in house like that. Yeah, we verse ourselves. We battle provocative against if it isn't love and then sensitivity against candy girl or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think it would be fun that way if we did something slick like that. 
overall. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Overall, you know, it's like you say, it's like everything always feels like a competition. The new edition doesn't even feel like we're in the lane to do that. You know what I mean? We just we we can make something fun with a Joe to see and a boy. I think it would be all something where I'd like to do more of a overall boy band. So it wasn't just make it with like us versus somebody. It would be all the boy bands just bringing their heat to the table for a night where everybody can just see us get down with some of our favorite records, you know, some of their favorite records from their favorite groups. But outside of that, with a versus, we, we got enough record and material in-house and groups within within New Edition to battle ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. I would agree. Nice. Candy Girl Sarah, what's your question? Hey, Ralph. Hi, Sarah. So, thinking back to you guys, you know, you dominated in the 80s and the 90s. Back then, who did you look at? What other male groups did you look at and go, ooh, they're going to give us a little trouble back then? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> you know, like not new kids on the block, not Joe to see nothing. Nah, I mean, we just loved all of those artists, man. They was doing things that I felt like there was certain groups. Like, Jodeci was coming with something that had we had a, had we had a say in it early on, you would have saw, like, more of the project lifestyle. The, the Candy Girl guys, the guys in the videos wearing their hats to the back and walking. That was all our own clothes. Telephone man, we started getting, they started bringing clothes to the <laughs> Do yeah. us for, for the video shoot. You can see all the colors and the colorful sweaters and stuff started coming out. Well, I think we would have been closer to, um, without all the way there, we'd have been closer to a, the imagery of a Jodeci eventually. You know, so Jodeci, I love all the groups. There was Jodeci, Boys to Men came out of our, you know, out of our camp. So can't really, that's that that apple didn't fall too far from the tree. We kind of gave birth to to those guys out there uh, via Michael Bivens. Um, Troop okay. came out when Troop came out and they was doing records like Spread My Wings and uh, the way that they were doing I thought they was hot. I was like, they was, and that's my boy, Steve Russell and John John, really close with in the group, you know, especially Steve uh, Russell Hodge. That's my man. So, you know, I think um, overall, I just felt like it was room for everybody, like when we came up. It was stylistics, it was blue magic, it was confunction and Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know, it was just room for it all. So I never looked at it like it was getting ready to be somebody that's going to give us a problem. Because New Edition and the way we approached the industry, we was a problem. The way, we, the way that we go into rehearsals, the way that we look at songs, the way that we attack it, we know we're going to be a problem. We know they, they got to look out for us, if anything else. You know, and we holding the torch. You got to catch us. And that was one of those things from... We wasn't looking at it like um, a competition at all. But if it was going to have one, we holding the trophy. You got to come catch it. You got to come get it from us. That's how I saw it. And that's how okay. most of us see it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we are looking forward toward to once this pandemic is 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 over, you know, knock on wood, plastic, anything that, you know, we'll see you guys back on stage and, you know, performing the song that you love and, and that we all love. It's just music is universal. It brings everyone together. So being able to be in a stadium again and, and performing and seeing you guys perform would be amazing right now. That's definitely my wish. We need live entertainment again. Have you ever thought about doing anything in the virtual space, uh, a performance or, or a concert? Yeah. 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 Awesome. As a crew, we're, um, we're working on it now. We're working on something as new addition right now. Nice. So hopefully somewhere soon we'll be able to do something in that in that realm. But it's been something we've always wanted to do. Um, as far as being able to do how how it's just set up to reach a lot of homes at once, whether it was gonna be HBO or pay-per-view. We wanted to always do our version of that. And we never got around to doing that. Um, so we're talking about it now, since everybody has to do it that way. And we're trying to figure out what's the best way for us to resurface as a team, as you know, as well as individuals. But to bring new addition back, we we it's up and operating as well as the individual stuff. Uh, we're trying to figure that out now. We're in talks with people to see what's going to be the best way to do that. So, yeah, sometime you know, it's not going to be that far along the line, down the line either. We'll do something. You know, we're not before we get too old. We're, 
we'll do something where we can still jump around and the stage don't smell like a bunch of ointments and stuff on there while we performing. We get it. Right. The age is a, is, is a lifestyle. So yeah. the age that you feel. And with all the minerals and, and, and black seed oil that you have, you will be fine. <laughs> Let's claim that. I am. Uh, I claimed it a long time ago. I claimed that these wasn't going to come in and start graying on me too, but they started to. <laughs> I better start playing around and get it cracking before it's too late. Yeah. But overall, we were, wisdom, <laughs> that's what it, it took a lot to get these. But I, I, <laughs> yeah, I went through. But yeah, overall, I'm I'm in a good place. Everybody is. Everybody looks great. Everybody in the group is doing very well. Very optimistic about making something special happen for the fans and for ourselves and um, just keep the legacy going. So sometime sometime in the near future, we'll, we'll, we'll be out there rocking again. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for hanging out with us and your time. And before we go, I want to I want to play a little game. I kind of usually end um, my interviews with the game, so I want to play. Can you beat Ralph Tresvog? Uh So what I'll do is I have ten new edition songs. It's going to be like a lightning round, and I'll play the song, and it's going to be Ralph versus the Indie Candy Girls. Okay, uh -oh. so who can name the song first? Yes, get ready, get ready, Rob. Okay, I'm getting play a set. texture record to make sure everybody can hear. Okay, all right, and uh, the grand prize is bragging rights. That's all That's I got, bragging rights. I'm finna shut y'all down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So this is this is the um this is the tester record. Can you guys all, right. all hear this? Okay. You know what song it was? I could hear it. What song was it? That was a Christmas album record. Um Christmas all over the world. Yeah, okay. I was about to say give love on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is this is the real round. Let me get my pen so I can go ahead and keep score. Ralph versus the Indie Candy Girls. Here we go. Song <laughs> one. Any heartbreak. I said that already. You was late. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Ralph. You were muted, Ralph. You didn't mute me. I've been out there with that one. I said, <laughs> Come on. Okay, so I, I, I'll get, I'll get, we're going to give Ralph that one. We're going to give Ralph that one. I shouted it out. You got to rewind the tape to see it. My lips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Song number two. In the girl. In the girl. I think we was a tie on that one. I thought yeah, I heard it was a tie. It was a tie. Okay, yeah, All right, I'll let you have that round. <laughs> no, we, we gave him the last one. We gave him the last one. I'm too competitive to give two. Okay. All right. But I kind of so, heard it said at the same time as I was saying. <laughs> so that's Ralph two, Candy Girls one, song three. Oh, Oh, y'all are good. <laughs> See? See? We I don't need candy girls that one, Ralph. Darren was, was on the rip on that one. Now, listen, he got to leave my mic unmuted. I don't think y'all missing me. Y'all got to look at the tape. <laughs> David, right. David leave his mic oh. unmuted. So we tied up right now. Okay. Two, two. All Here right. we go. The next one. Two, two. Wait a minute. How was that? One, two, three, four. Hold on. We tied on one. Right. I played four songs already? No. So you played three. We tied on one. We tied on one of them. One of them was a tie. So I got a point for that, and they got a, they got their first point. I had two, and they had one from the tie. Understood. Okay. So song number four. Here we go. Y'all ready for four? Yep. Yeah. Okay, Ralph. Give me my music. I know my yeah, music. You again. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite songs. 
Leaving you again. You know what? Sierra and Lil Bow Wow did a remake of that. I was about to say, yeah. that's what popped in my head by the end. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. All right, next song. Here we go. With you all the way. Yep. I was about to say all Boston love, so you you know. <laughs> I knew it was one of them too, though. Yep. That's from the um, ah man. All for you album. Let me tell you something, Ralph. You guys came like a half a block away from my house. My mother would not let me go. I was so bad. But when you guys came for the All for Love tour, I I luckily had an uncle that worked for MCA. I drove to New York and got my tickets. I saw y'all in Connecticut, New York, and Philly. I was not happy. Nah. So that's my so, favorite tour. That's what's up, Karen. Thank you for that. Yeah. No problem. No problem. That was like the Fat Boy, Sherelle. Yeah. Wow. See, Ramika, shake her head. You were there too, girl? Yeah, I, I know. It, whenever they're in Indy, so I'm waiting for I'm waiting for COVID to open up. Come on back to Indy. We coming. We coming. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Next song. Next song. Yeah. Hey, Sarah. Look. To <laughs> me. Okay, Ralph. You got three. The Candy Girls got four. I think it's the delay in the phone, man. Oh, well, now it's a delay. Okay. Internet, man. y'all got me, y'all. You was fast on that one. I was still trying to get that. One. You got me on that one. Okay. Y'all ready? Yep. yep. All right, Ralph. Yep. Stone Cold Gentle. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I think they were, still, they were still in any mode. All good. It's all good. I love the trash talking. Come on. Come on. Here we go. In any mode, man. We battling. This is a battle. I'm serious about this. Here we go. If it is love. Yeah, Ralph got that. He beat me. Yeah. It's okay. You was on it, though. <laughs> you was on your game. Hey, I performed that girls one. Girls are always on their game. I've listened, I performed that one way too much to lose that one. If I'd have lost that one. <laughs> now, I, I can break out the dance steps with you now, Ralph. I think everybody knows the routine for that one. Say it. I'm- <laughs> Come on now. Okay. Oh, hold on. Next song. Hold on. All right, here we go. Sensitivity. I threw in a remix just to see if somebody would know. The I was about to say I was listening for sensitivity. I didn't catch that beginning part. Long <laughs> with that intro. That was the remix intro. I like to make me want to holler. Right. It's had that Marvin in it. Okay. Two more songs to go, and we're tied five five. Are we? Oh, I thought I was. Five five. Come on, Sarah. <laughs> All right, we got two more songs. Two more songs. We we working together. We gotta we gotta get these last two. Next song. Could never buy your love. No. Oh, for the movie, uh, money. Yeah. Ralph got that one. That was the movie. More money. More money. More money. More money. Yeah, that's right. I remember yeah, the movie. That was the song. Sorry. You love. Yeah, come on with it. Okay. True love can bring all the money. Yeah. That was my joint. I love that record. The harmonies on that record with Phil Cole, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis. They, they produced that one. They hooked that up. It was like Ralph, a little bit of new addition, or Ralph woven into it. It was just like the perfect combination of you. So yeah. awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. Last song. It's six to five. Mm. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Number one level, that's all mine. Y'all would know that one, huh? <laughs> the new single, or well, latest single from the forthcoming project, All Mine. What happened, Candy Girls? Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever. <laughs> 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 I mean, it would have been pretty bad if we beat you, though, right? Oh, oh man. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Y'all whooped me with my own records. <laughs> Listen, they, they came close. I do, man. Listen, too close. It was a little too close. But that means, you know, we're real candy girl. That's right. I expected it to be a battle. Man. Yeah. We're, we're going to let you just, you know, you know sweep us. <laughs> oh, no. I had to step it up on them last couple. Yeah, we saw you lean in. We saw you lean in. Yeah, when he leaned in, it was over. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing good before he leaned in. Yeah, man. I was like, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> nah, you, you turned it to Jordan real quick, but it's okay. That's, that's your music. To, to, to Ramika's point. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun, though. And thank you for that, Ralph. We had a good time. We really had a great time. Um, chatting about what motivates you, what inspires you, what you've been through, how you help others. I'm gonna rewind this a couple of times to you know get my mind and my body right because you know um, it's just vital that we do that, especially during these times, of keeping our immune system on point, but keeping our minds right too. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and thank you, uh, Candy Girl Sarah and Candy Girl Ramika for hanging out uh, during the interview and your questions uh, were amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Loved it. it. And if we had about four more songs, we, you know, they might have they might have took you out, Ralph. Yep. I don't know. It was on me. They was on my heels, though. <laughs> I actually pulled in the lead for a second there. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Am I behind on my own joints? <laughs> but it worked out. I'm good. And I'm glad you guys was able to participate today. It made it, it made it even that much more fun. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing your time and your day with us. Thank you. Thank you. No thank doubt. You. And thank you for your time and your day and let us, letting us see your, your beautiful scenery uh, by the tree in the water. So, oh, so now you're going to show the water. Great. <laughs> I'm a Connecticut girl, so and I'm in Indiana right now, and I, I am landlocked, and it drives me crazy. But um, I need to get around some water today, somehow, some way. But thank you for that, because you made it. You did. That's beautiful. We got some water now. Thank you. There you go. That's it right there. Yes. Yeah. So peaceful, so calm. Man, love, ladies. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you so much, Ralph. Be blessed and happy holidays. Thank you.